Everyone, hey, welcome back. This is another anime review of Zonkin no Terra, also known as Terror in Resonance, Resonance or Terror of the Echo, also known as officially Terror in Tokyo in Japan. Is that enough names? <laughs> Seriously, Zonkin no Terra, Terror in Resonance, Terror of the Echo, and Terror in Tokyo. <clears throat> Anyways, though. <clears throat> Wow. All I have to say is wow. An anime that I watched and reviewed for the fall of two th or the summer of 2014. Uh, probably the second shortest. Second only to uh, Fate Khalid. Okay? Because it's only 11 episodes long. And all I have to say is it was really fucking good. Okay? I'll get into why later on. Although there were definitely some issues that I had with it. Which I'll also get into later on, of course. Uh, it was actually an anime original. Meaning it... Didn't, doesn't have anything based on before, so no manga, no light novel, no visual novel, uh, no video game, no anything. Okay, it was directed by Shinichiro Watanabe and produced by Koji Yamamoto and, and Mak Makoto Kimura and Takamitsu Inoue, and the music's by Yoko Kano and it's by Studio Mappa, and doesn't say who wrote it though. I'm guessing it's probably Watanabe too. And it originally ran from July 10th, 2014 to September 25th, 2014, with a total of 11 episodes in the end. Yeah. So what's the plot of Zonkyo, uh, of Terror in Resonance? Well, basically, Terror in Resonance has to do with these two, uh, basically, teenagers who are nicknamed 9 and 12. Um, I uh, don't think it ever actually stated what their real names are. They're, they're just known by their number names, 9 and 12, and it's explained later on in the series exactly why they go by 9 and 12. Who are basically committing terrorist acts. They're blowing up buildings and everything, okay? So, by all accounts, they're terrorists. However, there is a motive meth method behind this, and they're odd terrorists in the sense that they go out of their way to not kill people, okay? They don't want to kill anyone, and I don't think they killed a single person in this entire series. In fact, I think probably the only person who actually died in this series was Five, who we'll get into later on, and she just committed suicide, okay? Oh no, there was that one officer that she killed before she committed suicide too. I think those might be the only two people that actually died in the series, okay? So, yeah. But anyways, though. Uh, 9 and 12, as well as 5, which, again, I'll get into later on, were part of a Japanese uh, project. Um, I forget what the project was called, though. Um, hold on a sec here. Uh, I don't remember what the project was called. I th or I think it was like the Athena project or something, which Japan was doing, I think, around the time of, like, World War II or maybe something after that, apparently. Which was that they would t took 12 children, 12 uh, Japanese children, and they basically took them, took them away from their families and friends and kept them in this institution where they basically trained them to become... Much more intelligent and much, and much more fit uh, human beings to basically raise up or train the younger generation t to become better than the older generation. I believe that's the gist of what the Athena Project was about. But their methods were extraordinarily cruel. Extraordinarily cruel to these fucking children. Only three ch of the children survived. The other, uh, the other nine died, alright, 9 and 12 were two of them who escaped the compound, and then 5 was the only one who actually passed, now, of course it is stated that 12, that 9 was actually better than 5, so if he stayed there he probably could have passed it, but he and 12 actually escaped, while 5 is the only one who officially passed it, okay, so yeah, um, and now 9 and 12 are back, and many years, like, many years later and they want they, not really revenge 
what they want to do is that by do, doing these terrorist acts, they want, their end goal was to basically wake up Japan, as they say, or reveal to the public what really happened <clears throat> in, into the, uh, in, during the Athena project. One, so that they can be remembered for who they really are, and two, so that Japan knows what really happened, you know. Anyone would want that. So, <clears throat> so to do this, they take on the Aliases 9 and 12, which they were given in the uh, institution, and the joint alias of Sphinx, in which they commit these terrorist acts with, by posting videos on YouTube before they're even going to launch them. So, or... I think it actually is YouTube, because Japan does have its alternate version of YouTube, but I think they actually were using YouTube in this series, which is pretty funny, okay? And that's the basic gist of the plot. Pretty complex, isn't it? Now, there's a lot of things I like in this series. First off, Nine and Cove, I think, are very interesting characters. They are lacking, I think, in the character development field of things, which I'll get into later on in this review, but I still think they are very good characters. They are... Quite complex. Not the most complex characters I've ever seen in anime, not by far. But I still really like them, okay? As the last episode was especially sad when they both died. Seriously. I, and the thing is, I could see it coming from a mile of fucking way, and it was still sad. Hold on a sec here. Huh. I could see it coming from a mile away, and it was still sad. That's how... You know that you have really good characters there, okay? Uh, there was also five. We don't know her real name either, um, but she was is an is an American FBI government operative who travels to Japan as part of her duties with Nest to lend support to the terrorist acts investigations. A master hacker. She also has a connection with to nine and twelve, which we learn later on, is because she was also in the institution, okay? And her whole reason, as we learn later on, for wanting to do this, because she just wanted to, she already knew that it was 9 and 12, but she wanted to beat 9, because apparently she's never been able to beat 9 before. Okay, and she just wanted to beat 9, and when she did, you know, she realized that her, I'm guessing she realized that her motives were really selfish, so instead of being captured, she just committed suicide. Okay. <laughs> Basically had herself burned alive. All right. Anyways, though, so I thought she was a decent character overall, but really, I didn't like her all that much. It's like, I can't really hide that fact here. I think there was also Kenji, Kenjiro Shibazaki, who is a, is a detective. I think he should have been the main detective and just kept five out of it, or maybe she was in it, but maybe like his subordinate or something, or sidekick or something, because really, her being the lead detective, I really think bog the series down a bit. That's probably my biggest complaint of the series, is just Five as a character. I just didn't think she was that interesting. And I mean, her motives, as we learn towards the end of the series, were kind of interesting, I guess. I think it was in, like, episode, like, 9 or 10 or something like that, okay? But, still, that's my biggest complaint about the series, okay? Uh, another issue I have is the animation. The animation isn't that good at all. Like, people tend to praise it, and I don't know why, it's not that good, like, now the art looks beautiful, it really does, but the animation, for the most part, sucks, it was actually really good in the first episode, and for some reason, most of the scenes after that, the animation just sucked, it really did, like, limited animation at its finest, okay, it really was, now, however, like I just said, though, the art was really good, okay, I'm gonna be honest with you, the art looked amazing, okay, Especially like when 9 and 12 are like high up on top of buildings and they're just looking at, at when it's nighttime and they're just looking down on Tokyo. It looks, with all the lights on and whatnot, it looks so beautiful. It really does. Uh, the other, two more characters I want to talk about here. There's Kenjiro Shibazaki who was a pretty good character as well. He's pretty much, even though 5 kind of knew who 9 and 12 were to begin with, uh, Shibazaki kind of was a very good investigator. He was very intelligent, and he's the one who ended up confronting 9 and 12 at the very end just before the American government flew in and, and killed them like the assholes that they are. 
And then there, of course, there's Lisa Mishima, who had basically came from an abusive home, and she ended up joining 9 and 12 accomplices because she didn't want to die. Okay, that was literally the reason they were going to kill her, but they gave her the option to join her to join them as an accomplice. She chose that instead of dying, and so there you go. Although, for some reason, she wasn't arrested at the end. Like, there's a at the very end of the series, there's like a, a year long time skip, and she wasn't arrested. <sighs> For some reason, I don't know why either, but either way though, I actually really liked her character in the beginning when she was first introduced. I really thought that she was just going to be a standard damsel in distress. I really did, but she turned out to be a very likable character, okay? Not my favorite character in the series. My favorite character in the series is actually 12, and I especially like the little like romantic uh, feelings I think they both had for each other up to the end. You know, which weren't heavily played out because this series isn't a, really a romance at all. Okay, but I still like the bit of like overtones there, that that they were probably in love with each other. All right. Anyways, though, aside from that, there's not really any other characters I really think are worth talking about. All right, like there's lots of other characters in the series, but none that I really think are worth mentioning, mentioning to any great extent. All right. So, anyways, though. Next up is the music. The music in this series is amazing. This should be go without saying because this soundtrack was composed by fucking Yoko Kano. Like, I don't know who better at composing, Yoko Kano or Yuki Kadra, but this is Yoko Kano and it was done amazingly. You know what would be the perfect anime soundtrack? Yoko Kano and Yuki Kadra. The gods have spoken. On that one. Anyways, Yoko Kano did an amazing job here, like always. Seriously. Probably, in terms of all the aspects I judge when I do these reviews, like char plot characters, uh, animation, art, m and the music, all five of those, the uh, music and the arts really the only two places that I really have zero complaints. All of the others, I have at least one complaint, okay? And here comes my biggest complaint, or not my biggest, my biggest was five, but my, my final complaint of the series. It starts out really slow. It took me a while to get into it, and people were saying, oh, anime of the season, anime of the season, anime of the season, since episode one. It's ended, and it had a perfect ending, don't get me wrong, but it's not enemy of the season, at least for me. My enemy of the season is still uh, a comic got kill, or SAO2. I'm still kind of having trouble deciding. But yeah, I'm sorry, it's just not enemy of the season for me, because it, started out, it took me like half the series just to get really into it, into thinking that it's great, you know. And still, every episode had something that was kind of slow, so it, that none of them were definitely perfect until the last episode, which I still believe was a perfect episode. Okay? So that's really my final complaint about the series. Overall, <clears throat> I definitely recommend the series, though. If you're a fan of Watanabe, which I'm not the hugest fan of it myself, but if you're a fan of Watanabe and you haven't seen the series yet, I think you're going to adore this fucking series, okay? Like, like really. I, I I really do. This series, I thought, was... It was a great anime. It was. Like, not... I didn't think it was as amazing as everyone else says. Um, but I still thought it was a great series, and it's worth experiencing at least once. It's only 11 episodes long. So, you know, if you have enough time in the day, you could probably watch this in, like, one fucking day. You could probably watch this in the morning. Like, in the entire series, if you have enough time, you know what I mean? So, anyways... Overall, I hope you enjoyed this review, guys. See you guys. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.